Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna continue with Ash and Hawk side quests. Let's jump right into it. As I walked through the alleyway, I heard someone crying. It was the voice of a girl. A girl. I walked while looking for the source of the voice and found the girl sitting on the, on the street corner. But there was another unexpected person there. The fuck is he saying to a girl? Oh, never mind. The girl stopped crying and started looking around. I didn't know what they were looking for, but it seems like something that she lost. I approached Levan, who was crouched on the ground. We decided to split up to look. Since he's dropped it on the top of the snow, the red color should stand out. I looked around, but it was not over here. I went back to where Levi was, but they didn't find it either. It had stopped since then, but it had to have snowed at least a few inches. Even if the glove was red, it would be difficult to find if it was buried. And now that I resumed looking, the girl didn't notice I was talking and continued to delicately come through the snow. And soon, she found it. The girl happily cheered, echoed. I turned to the direction of the voice and saw her looking up while standing. Levi soon joined, but the girl remained in the same position. I followed her line of sight and saw the red glove. Perhaps the window blew, op blew it away or perhaps someone did. The glove was caught up on the high window windowsill. Of course, we couldn't find it up at that height. Still, the girl had no way, to, way of reaching it. Levin took a big stride towards the building, but the girl suddenly raised her voice from behind. He turned around, but it was already too late. Wait, what? Suddenly, so Levin's eyes shrank down to half. I didn't understand what just happened, I quickly ran up to help him. It was narrow and saw a shallow. But there was a water channel on the side of the road. And the glove was stuck on the window of the building beyond the channel. Just strip. I will warm you up with my heat. Even though the channel was shallow, it had to be really cold because of the water. 
I took a step closer to the channel to reach out and help Levi up, but the decision was not a good one. I slipped on the ice and fell into the channel too. Both of us were, were now granged. <laughs> Both of us look so dumb, but we managed to retrieve the glove. Ah. <laughs> あの子も嬉しそうだったし。そうだけどよ。まさかこんな大将が。うん、どうぞ。どうぞ。うん。Dave and I ran out as much water we could, but there was still some wet footprints trailing behind us as we walked. Dave and I huddled around the fireplace to warm up. I made it was sent the bowl some water so we could warm ourselves, but since that was so sudden, it was likely to take some time. てる服を着てるからじゃないか。とりあえず着替えてきたら。そうするか。お前は俺の服貸してやろうか。Just like he said my teeth was clattering, but borrowing Glave's clothes was too risky. If I change here, Levi would definitely walk in without caring. He would probably suggest getting changed together. では、お前が言ったことだろ。濡れてる服のままだと寒いぜ。せめて服を脱いで火に当たったらどうだ。気が向いたらね。全然動く気ねえじゃねえか。かって、しかしてみ。I could tell that Levi was getting irritated. This wasn't moving in a good direction. I doubt he will force the clothes off me, but. Levi's expression froze and then he quickly turned red. He's not red in this picture though. What are you doing, Dodo? I knew it was falsely accusing him, but sorry, Levi. I had to avoid being found out as a woman, no matter what. Levi sat down next to me and threw some more firewood into the fireplace. He didn't have to do it with me, but he seemed to have made his mind up. Levi sat there, sat in the front of the fire and sighed. Don't walk on my keyboard, please. Thank you. 
Put that shoulder together and watch the fire in the fireplace. I held my hand over it and soon my shivering head ぐらい<笑> The fire crackled and shoot up some sparks. We remained quiet for a while as we both stared into the fireplace. Davy was usually cheerful and thoughtful, but was quiet right now. That made it feel awkward for some reason, and I looked around for something to talk about. I noted some books stacked on top of the table. I bet he reads them. That was unexpected, but I guess I had seen a few seen him read a few times before. I wondered what type of book he was reading, so I took one in my hand. それがさっき話に出た本だよ。シーケリスの冒険な。あの子と話してたのって、この本のことだったんだ。子供向けの本なんだけどさ、すげえ面白いんだよ。何度読み返しても<笑> turn the cover with a picture of a monster to look inside. They peered at it from next to me and explained each and every part. Monogatarinobotorekaibutsnikwarete, でも David closed his eyes and rested them inside it. Them aside. Inside it? Yeah. 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 The odd feeling gradually dissipated as we continued talking. Either way, I'm glad to have discussed a side to Levi that I didn't know before. A maid came running in. He puffed out his chest and said something similar to the line in the book. Something about that made me laugh, so I accepted his offer and went to go warm up. And that was it for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.